Hoop Genius, How a Desperate Teacher and a Rowdy Gym Class Invented Basketball. John Coy, Illustrations by John Morse. A.T. Halstead, expert in marching and mass calisthenics. R.A. Clark, gymnast and apparatus expert. In December of 1891, James Nasmith, a young teacher, took over a rowdy gym class that had already forced two teachers to quit. He didn't want to, but nobody else would teach that class. The students hated the boring exercises and gymnastics that they'd been doing over and over. So Nazmuth decided to try something fun. Indoor football. He needed something much less rough. The next day, Nazmuth suggested indoor soccer. He called a halt. In desperation, he turned to his favorite sport, lacrosse. Nothing was working with this group. You see all the new injuries that are popping up from picture to picture? Nazmuth felt like giving up, but couldn't. The boys in the class reminded him of how he'd been at their age, energetic, impatient, and eager for something exciting. He needed a totally new game where to avoid tackling no running with the ball was allowed. He remembered playing duck on a rock as a boy. In that game, you knocked an opponent's fist-sized stone off a larger rock by throwing your own. If you missed, you had to retrieve your stone before you were tagged. So accuracy was more valuable than force. He snapped his fingers and said, I've got it. How about a game with a goal off the ground that required an arcing throw? That night, he stayed up late thinking about the new game. The next morning, December 21st, 1891, Nazmuth rushed into his office and grabbed a soccer ball. Now he needed a goal. He asked Pop Stebbins, the building superintendent, for a couple of square boxes. He didn't have them, but he had something else two old peach baskets. Nazmuth tacked the rules to the gym bulletin board and promised the class that if this new game failed, he would not try any more experiments. Captains chose teams of nine players, excuse me, nine members, and Nazmuth selected two center men. He tossed the ball up between them and they jumped for it to start the new game. Because the men had never played before, Nazmuth called many fouls for holding, pushing, and tripping. After two fouls, the player had to sit on the sideline until the next goal occurred. William Chase launched a shot from 25 feet that went in for the first and only basket of the game. When Nazmuth blew the whistle to end the game, nobody wanted to leave. The next day, the students lined up eagerly for the game. They played hard but avoided fouling because they wanted to stay on the court. When students went home for Christmas vacation, they taught the new game to their friends. Soon, people in cities, small towns, and on farms were playing basketball. In 1892, a group of women teachers from a nearby school asked James Nasmith if they could play too. I don't see why not, he said and games were arranged. In one of them, Nazmuth as a referee was shocked when he called a foul and one of the women protested as strongly as any man. But he remembered that game clearly. One of the women, Maud Sherman, later became his wife. By 1936, basketball was so popular around the world that it became an Olympic sport. James Nazmuth attended the opening ceremonies, and when each nation dipped its flag to honor him, tears of happiness came to his eyes. The end. Author's note. James Nazmuth 
1861 to 1939, suffered the loss of both his parents to typhoid fever by the time he was nine, and he was raised by his uncle Peter, who was stern and demanding. James taught in school and dropped out at 15 to work in logging camps, but he returned to school, studied hard, and graduated from McGill University, University in Montreal. He attended the International YMCA Training School in Springfield, Massachusetts, and accepted a job as a teacher upon graduation. The YMCA, Young Men's Christian Association, was quick to recognize basketball's potential, and by 1892, the organization was helping spread the game around the world. A number of people shared valuable information with me about James Nasmith and the creation of basketball, including John Gossett, who showed me the original stone from Duck on a Rock, and connected me with John Dunn, who led me, who led a memorable tour of Nazmuth sites around Almont, Ontario. The staff at the Nazmuth Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts, provided important documents, as did Jeffrey Monsoul, archivist at Springfield College, and Ryan Bean at the YMCA Archives at the University of Minnesota. Thank you to them, and above all, to Dr. Nazmuth and that rowdy cloud for this great game. Hoop genius, how a desperate teacher and a rowdy gym class invented basketball.